I think he said it was about uh, midnight. <laughs> I need to talk to somebody. Hold on. I need to talk to somebody now. Right now. The <coughs> This is Charlie One Nine. We need a bus ASAP, corner Ninth and Avenue D. You gotta help them. Help who? Where? <laughs> My apartment. Help them. Police. Hello, NYPD. Hello. It's clear. Oh, this is some crispy French fries. It smells like it's coming from here. Yeah, and the smoke. Hello? NYPD? Police? <coughs> NYPD? Another one. Yeah, Central, this is Detective Lupo. You got two DOAs, one male, one female. Definitely getting off the fried foods now. I just finished nursing my mother through her final illness, and I'd just become a father for the first time. My wife and I were strapped for cash, so I'd been tutoring, which made me less available for Ellen and the baby. Wendy was always my responsibility, but she couldn't be my first priority anymore. Did you deliberately fail to get her prescriptions filled? Of course not. I thought she could handle filling them herself. I was wrong. I dropped the ball, I'm sorry. Did her behavior give you reason to think she wasn't taking her medication? No, if I'd noticed her behavior changing, I would have done something, but she seemed fine. How about the night that you dropped her off at the emergency room? Of course she was manic, but she told me that she'd gotten angry at the British girl and she'd done something terrible, she needed my help. She told me that she'd gotten rid of her bloody clothes she told me that there was a knife, but she forgot where she put it. Wendy was coherent and aware of what had happened. If she was so rational, why did you rush her to the emergency room to get antipsychotic medication? Like I said, she was manic, rational but manic. And when she told me she'd gone off her meds, I was worried she'd hurt herself. Then, Dennis, why did the ER doctor diagnose your sister as being in a full-fledged psychotic episode? I can't answer that. She didn't tell her that she did a terrible thing, that she hurt people? I'd warned my sister not to say anything about what she did. You coached her? In a way, yes, to protect her. You coached her to say she's the little girl no one wanted, that she needed her sweetie bear. That's what she told the doctor. Of course I didn't coach her to say that. Look, I know that when you made your plea deal with her, she told you she knew what she did was wrong. That's after she'd been under house arrest in your home for a week. After you'd had time to coach her to say the words that would send her to prison. I resent that. Isn't that where you wanted her to go to prison for 20 years instead of a psychiatric hospital where she might get better? No, that's not true. Wasn't that your plan all along to get her out of the way so that you could sell this valuable antique? This bear, your sister's sweetie bear, without her knowledge. No, I would not steal from my sister. Then why did you try to sell it overseas using a false address? Wendy knew all about that. It was her idea. She said there'd be some kind of tax advantage, that we wouldn't have to pay estate taxes. What did I know? She was the CPA in the family. So you're saying that your psychotic, bipolar sister came up with this scheme? Yes. She's the one who gave me the address in London. Maybe I was naive. I should have asked questions. Mr. Teal, you are unbelievable. Objection. Mr. Cutter has evidently run out of pertinent questions. Sustain. When push came to shove, Dennis Teal threw his sister under a bus and made her out to be some tax evading cheat. He just handed the jury reasonable doubt on a silver platter. A side issue. Your whole theory of the crime was a stretch to begin with. Maybe a stretch to prove, but that's what happened. Sometimes justice is only about what you can prove. Then let's change the theory of the crime to something we can prove. Dennis conspired with Wendy 
to sell the antique overseas and avoid estate taxes. When Geraldine and Colin found out they were using their address, Wendy killed them. Except, by definition, you can't conspire with a psychotic person. There's no meeting of the minds. Except Dennis and his lawyer just spent the better part of the day arguing that Wendy was rational. Fine. Then let's steer into the skit. You want to paint Wendy Teal as a conspirator and a cold-blooded killer when you have evidence to the contrary? This isn't a con. You're running on a defendant in some back room. You're in open court in front of a jury. Either Wendy was a victim of her brother's manipulation or she was a tax-cheating co-conspirator, not both. I am not going to apologize for doing what needs to be done to put this monster behind bars. A trial is a truth-seeking process, not a vehicle for you to obscure the truth to win a conviction at all costs. You have a greater duty than that. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, in my opening statement, I told you that I would establish that Mr. Teal intentionally caused his sister to experience a psychotic break, fully aware of her potential for violence, and that Wendy killed the two victims while in that psychotic state. As you just heard, the defense suggests that I failed to meet my burden of proof. The defense is correct. I did. But what the evidence elicited at this trial does prove, beyond any reasonable doubt, is that Dennis Teal conspired with his sister to commit tax fraud by selling a valuable heirloom overseas. We know this because the defendant admitted it here under oath. We also know that they used the victim's London address to perpetrate their fraud. And we know that Wendy killed the victims. Now, even though the people are under no obligation to prove motive, it's reasonable to infer that the victims were killed when they discovered their address was being used for a tax fraud. Objection? Uh, overruled. But, Your Honor, he can't... I said overruled. Now sit down. Mr. Carter, continue. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, it doesn't matter if Wendy acted with or without her brother's consent. As he admitted, they conspired together, and he is liable for any acts she committed in furtherance of their crime. In the eyes of the law, you're in for a penny, you're in for a pound, and that's why you have to find Dennis Teal guilty of both murders. Your Honor, I want his whole summation stricken. He cannot suddenly offer a completely different theory of a crime from what he has prosecuted in this courtroom for the last two weeks. I haven't changed a single element of the crime. I simply incorporated a new fact offered by Ms. Grubman's own client, that he conspired with his sister. Ms. Grubman, you're bound by the testimony of your own client. Mr. Cutter is within his rights to put that testimony in a new light. But his whole premise is absurd. Wendy is an unmedicated bipolar psychotic. It's black letter law that you cannot enter into a conspiracy with someone who is mentally incompetent. I agree, except If I'd noticed her behavior changing, I'd have done something, but she seemed fine. She was manic, rational, but manic, she was coherent and aware of what had happened. The defendant's own words in this courtroom not 24 hours ago. And what better witness to Wendy's mental state than her caring, long-suffering big brother. Ms. Grubman, your objection is overruled. Mr. Carter's summation will stand. I will now charge the jury and send them to deliberations. 